son, how you doing? I hope you had a nice night down in the blue. Good morning to the village. Here's the maybe of something new. Hello, 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 how you doing? Hello, hello, hello. If the day brings sun, I'll be happy. I'm hoping that today's a bit different. Hello, 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 how you doing? Sitting in the dark on the dock with the fishes. Watch the ocean fall and the shore in the distance. Gotta close my eyes to those rebel ocean wishes. But hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. probably like, I don't know, 10 or 11 the first time, we did not like each other at all. It, me and Morgan met each other and realized within the first couple of minutes that we were very similar. And that was a bit terrifying because I think for so much of my life, I had been very intellectually alone. We kept seeing each other every year. And then finally one year, we magically didn't hate each other anymore. And that year, Mari moved on to the farm. So now I and my grandmother live in the big house, which is off that ways. And then this house is Mari's house. Proximity turned into emotional closeness and that turned into creative closeness. And that, uh, that relationship, I think, was really formative in, in helping me to realize that I could create things that were big and beautiful instead of just keeping them as ethereal ideas inside of my head. So we put everything aside and became best friends. And that was about three years ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah, three years ago now. I would fire it on myself. You're welcome, Bob. Mm -hmm. Oceanborn is about a Viking era who discovers Finn, the daughter of a fishing chieftain on a small island after being left there for dead after a raid thrust together by circumstance and by the manipulations of this trickster god named Gideon, they're forced to unite against the pressures of political division and racism to realize that they are much more similar than they had realized at first. Uh, I'm a bit of a nerd and I was reading science uh, magazine articles for fun and I found this one in an anthropological magazine that was essentially like, surprise, a lot of Vikings were women. We assumed that they were all men, but it turns out that they weren't. And they were studying the bones and like a lot of um, the burial sites that were for most famous warriors were actually female warriors. And I was like, well, somebody needs to write about this. And then I was like, well, I'm going to write about this. So Oceanborn started with wanting to write about Vikings because Vikings are very cool and about uh, wondering what life was like for Viking women. So I sat down on this very couch with Mari at the beginning of winter break. I was like, so Mari, I have an idea. What would you think about doing a musical? Mari sort of sat there for a second and was like, yeah, sure, we could probably do that. So we wanted to show something that was brutal and raw about women, that women can be horrible. Women can be, the, the women can carry the greatest evils in history, and they have done, and they're just as human as anybody else in that way. I think that Girls Will Be Girls is my favorite song. I actually, I have trouble picking favorites. I also really like the new finale. 
But I think that Girls Will Be Girls has a really important message, particularly right now with the Me Too movement. I think not many people actually speak out about sexual assault, and it's definitely not something that gets addressed in the musical theater world. And given that it is an entertainment industry, that is something that we need to be aware of and that we need to like respect those survivors and to listen to their voices and listen to their stories. So the ability to put something like that on a stage and see people appreciate it and see people appreciate its power has been really incredible. I knew Girls Would Be Girls was going to hit home with a lot of people, but it was a different thing to see how ju just how powerful it ended up being that people felt empowered and they could sing this song in the car and it could be fun for them. They could they could enjoy art about some of the greatest pain that they had experienced in their lives, which it seems like it's going to be a cheap medium for that type of suffering. But it, it turned out, I think, to be really productive. And it was really beautiful for me as the, the songwriter to see that happen. Written out of history, I know And though it takes all the fight out of me I will be king, I will be Strike the match and watch it burn Wait for the hurt to come and learn Fight them, push them back Don't turn your back You don't want to lose to nobody You say boys will be boys Girls will be girls Girls will be toys for you So when you bleed, don't make a sound No one wants to hear you making noise I am bold and brave I'll take my place in the open page of history And though it takes all the fight out of me I will be king I will be battlefields and graves, my mother's face, shadow on the open seas. Boys will be boys, girls will be girls, girls will be toys for you. So when you bleed, don't make a sound, no one wants to hear you scream, I know, I know, people like me get Written out of history, I know. I know. I know. Boys will be boys, girls will be girls. We won't be toys for you. So when you bleed, don't make a sound. No one wants to hear you scream. Boys will be boys, girls will beat boys. I won't lie still for you. I won't be weak, I'll shut it down. I won't scream out loud, the world will belong to me. The world will belong to me. I was looking for more opportunities for us to get some of this out in the world because the production timeline for shows is ridiculous. The average for a play, not even a musical, from finishing writing to getting any staging is seven years. So I was like, I do not want to wait seven years to see some of this on a stage. So I was like, well, I've seen other people do this before. I guess it's worth a shot to just email them. So I emailed the booking agent for 54 Below and they responded asking for some more information about our fan base, about sort of the number of followers we have, about, I guess, just the strength of our brand and how many people would come see us. So I sent all of that information over and then they were like, great, we'd love to offer you a contract. And I came back from college that weekend and sat Hannah and Mari down on this couch and I told both of them that we were going to go to 54 Below and perform and uh, unsurprisingly both of them cried. Singing like a concert, sing through of Ocean Born at 54 Below in, in July. What? 
Are you, Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> And I did break down crying when she told us because like 54 Below is just kind of one of those things for theater kids where it's just this magical place of like everybody goes there. So it was really cool. And then immediately afterwards we started like making out a rehearsal process of just like every day we would spend a certain amount of time rehearsing the songs, rehearsing the harmonies, getting down the harmonies and writing a whole bunch of other stuff. 54 Below was challenging because I was essentially working with a cast that had never sung before. So as much as 54 Below was largely vocally challenging for me, it was also a matter of directing my sister Hannah and Morgan because they had never sung publicly like this before. It taught me to be a vocal teacher and to be compassionate and uplifting and it, it was kind of inspired by the message of Oceanborn which is women together have great goals when we uplift each other we reach them New York City Woo! how are we're you feeling freaking, guys we're freaking out a little bit a little here bit. we feel good my a heart bit. rate is like a solid bum, like bum, 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 bum. 160 we're freaking out a little a little bit a little bit like this why are we freaking out we're about to Four premiere below. in New York and now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage the writers and creators of Ocean Born. nervous it was almost like I was floating because I wasn't really concerned about the music because I knew even if other people didn't like it it was something that I was proud of and I was proud to be showing but I, I think my body hadn't quite got the memo that I wasn't feeling nervous because I I couldn't really walk without feeling a little bit of a you know wobble in my knees I mean, it's a very intense sensory experience. Um, I don't know how many people who are watching this have been up on a stage, but the lights are very blinding and it kind of turns everything into this monolithic mass of faces that you can't quite differentiate. And it's just a wall of sound, of people clapping, of all of these faces that you don't know and bright lights. And it's very exciting, but it's also very overwhelming on the first moment that you step into a stage. <laughs> erupted into happiness and applause <laughs> and I, it was a bit shocking because I, I, you end the song and there's this half a second of silence before people realize they're supposed to clap but we didn't just have fans in the audience we had producers people. we had you know, directors choreographers we had agents we had people interviewing for magazines and then we had normal people who bought and bought a ticket to 54 below as a fun thing to do for the evening that contingent of people was the one that I was most nervous about because I knew that the songs appealed to the 15 fans. year old girls <laughs> but I didn't know that it would make you know older middle-aged white men you know, stand up at the end. The people in our audience who walked in off the street because they wanted to see a performance for the evening, not only got a performance for the evening, they got an insight into a whole demographic of people who are devastatingly underrepresented in media and the arts. And also for our fans who got to watch it then later on YouTube and stuff like that, they have the standing ovation in the last song on YouTube. And I think that for a bunch of like 12 to 16 year old girls, seeing a full room of people stand up and clap 
for something that is relatable to them, that is true to their experience, is also really empowering because suddenly you have a whole group of people who have been underrepresented, seeing their story on a stage and seeing people appreciate it and care about it. Having people stand up for you is a really empowering experience as an artist because then it wasn't only popularity for me. It was people standing up to say, you did a good job, I respect that. Because that is not something you will get often as a teenage girl. And I mean, it's definitely not something that we've gotten often throughout this experience. As empowering and incredible as writing Oceanborn has been, it remains that 81% of our followers are females under the age of 20, which means that still now our target demographic is generally the only ones who are supporting us. We are not receiving a lot of outside sort of respect. I don't think that's because they wouldn't respect it if they didn't see it. I think it's just because there's this prohibitive threshold of, I'm not a teenage girl, I can't enjoy this. Yeah. Which we learned, and they learned in the audience, that that wasn't true when they sat through the show. We have done a lot of industry work to try to pitch this to producers, to try to get producers to take us seriously, to try to get everybody in the Broadway industry to take this project seriously is something that could move forward. This has never actually come into reality as a performance on a stage, as a musical, and it already has 10,000 followers and a successful merchandising industry and a documentary and music on iTunes, and still the industry won't stage us because we're teenage girls. One of the most disheartening and yet interesting experience of this was when agents at a very big agency told our producer that they wouldn't hire us because we weren't old or connected enough, very directly. And I think that what they were really saying was, you are young, you are country, you are girls. The Broadway industry is owned by older white men, and older white men have plenty to offer this world, but the problem is it's assumed that it's at the exclusion of teenage farm girls. And we really believe that our story is one that should be shared and is one that is important. We aren't just in this because we're like, we want to be famous and we want to see our stuff on stage. Although that would be fantastic. But I really believe that this story is something that is of incredible importance to bring to Broadway in a culture dominated by musicals that only treat women as interesting commodities and objects to put on stage and sing pretty soprano notes. I think it's really important to have women of substance, whose whole substance is not romantic interest, on stage showing young girls that they have a place there too, and that Broadway is an industry that can change. But unfortunately, we're seeing that that might be a little bit harder to change than we expected. You refuse to understand that life is so much tougher than your blue secluded dreamland. I have a weight upon my shoulders since I was a baby, crushing, beating, breaking, heart that's beating, breaking. This is the way my people have lived since the gods ran free, since the world began to breathe. I am the first of my kind, a girl without brothers, the next kid in line. Look at me how much I've sacrificed. The blood and the bruises, you just like losing. You don't have any fight. You refuse to understand that other people's villages are worth much more than winning. So if my father's just damage control and your victory, sick of your one-sided histories, you're being blind, I'm tired of hearing it, why won't you listen? I have a weight upon my shoulders, a people who trust me, a father who loved me, the weight of a corpse in the ground, burial shroud, the sound as we lowered him down. It resounds in my soul, every moment so sharp it could kill, the dead here can never be still. So if your people can't build their own houses, get out of town, then leave on your boats and go pillage somewhere without innocent people asleep in their houses. You don't have a spark of adventure, I could cut you open, I would find nothing at all. You stay still, I move, you run away when things get hard, I've got nowhere to flee right now. Intruder with nowhere to go, at least you have a family, an island for your own. My ship was meant to be out on the sea to be seeing things you call it pillaging, I call it victory, you call it sinning, but I call it history. <sighs> Baptize, absolved of all your sins because you dream of waging wars and being king. Whenever you touch the land, you are unclean again, some of your ancestors burn, skeletons load the dirt, something that you'll never learn.
I learned from my stories. Your stories can burn. Along with my history? Along with my ancestors. Well, they were tougher than your father was. Let's write down whoever's most loud. Yes, some people got written out. It's not like that, isn't it? The dead don't leave behind stories, just orphans. Murder and legacy are the same to the winner. Now you know what it's like to lose. We've had a lot of setbacks from people treating us with little respect and not being interested in the project because we are young girls. But we've also had a lot of really amazing, powerful women, you know, mentor us and support us. And I think that is ultimately more important. And that's why Oceanborn is going to succeed. Martin Luther King Jr said that when you are a minority group, sometimes you have to be so indestructibly good at what you do to garner the respect of people in positions of power. It makes it hard because we don't have anybody to point to and say that, like, look, they did it so we can do it too. We're, we have to point to us and say we're going to do it. And then in the future, maybe girls who are like us and want to write are going to have us to point to, I hope. There was a twinge of sadness, like this had been our lives for the last three, four months and it was over and it was just kind of like, I'm never, gonna, I'm never gonna do anything like this again, but it was just a beautiful moment of like, I fulfilled that journey, but it's also I'm sad that it was over. Going through this process, it really brought us closer together and we just bonded, having to spend hours and hours and hours a day with each other, you just kind of get a certain connection and yeah, it was nice. We've always been creative partners, but this has forced us to grow a lot more as professionals because Oceanborn has become surprisingly big. We have to make a lot of big scale decisions. We have to make decisions about like producers and about rights and about where we're going to perform and about marketing things on iTunes and Spotify and things like that. There's, there's a lot more involved in this project than just creating together. So it's a really cool thing to watch your best friend sort of go into an industry and learn how to maneuver it and learn how to work it. It definitely has changed our lives a lot. I think one thing that's really challenging as a writer is it's very much playing the long game constantly. You write something and you're like, wow, I have this finished piece. And then it's going to take forever before it's out in the world. And so having something that became a tangible success so quickly was really affirming because both of us have been writing a lot. We got to see something that we created actually exist in the real world and make a difference in people's lives and we got to see people fall in love with it and people make art about it and make accounts about memes about it and fan accounts and all kinds of crazy stuff. Just seeing how much of a success it's become in such a short time has been really humbling and sort of dedicate ourselves to making this a success because now we feel that we owe it not only to ourselves but also to all of the fans who have been supporting us since day one. It's really become a collaborative experience between us and our fans. Ultimately, I hope that people come out of Oceanborn knowing that they get to be better every day of their lives and that they shouldn't be ashamed of the people that they were yesterday if those people were bad. That we all have a chance to change our world and make it you know, absolutely beautiful. Shine along the water It's probably the hump of something strange Perhaps a dragon sunk who lost his fire Or Iger thrown silver which is up into the waves Perhaps we'll never know But I like to think we could someday And you and I could go out on a boat A curse so it would rose by itself Watching our world passing by Never seeing stars the same way twice you and I Wouldn't that be nice? Mm. 
No, I just don't see it, I see something else instead Something lurking deep beneath the blue Could be a humpback whale, or maybe even two Latched up to a chariot and pulling mermaid through the water I'd like that for us someday You and I, breathing where there isn't light Swimming for our lives beneath the sea Fighting off monsters with tentacles like haze And every evening we'd be coming out alright Never seeing stars but once or twice You and I Wouldn't that be nice? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. That would be nice ba -ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da. You and I Doing what we need to survive you, you by, by my, my side. side. Wouldn't that be nice? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. That would be nice. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba.